Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Didier today is walking you through the analysis of a malicious office document that actually arrived encrypted and then used PowerShell in order to download its actual payload via bits. It's a little bit of follow-up uh, to a diary that uh, Didier posted this weekend. And uh, what was sort of interesting about the sample initially was that the password mentioned in the email actually turned out to be wrong. But in this analysis, uh, Didier is using the correct password for this particular document and then was able to extract the PowerShell script that this document attempts to execute. Now the use of BITS is nothing new. BITS stands for the Background Intelligent Transfer Service. That's, well, uh, sort of the closest thing to WGET and CURL that you find on a Windows system. And the nice part about it is that it's a standard systems component used to download updates. So wouldn't be all that unusual to see bits with its fairly characteristic user agent reaching out outbound. Now, sometimes I see people saying that, hey, uh, Bits is only really used uh, by Microsoft, so you can look that it doesn't reach out to any non-Microsoft IP addresses. Not really true. I have also seen uh, Bits being used by other legitimate software to download updates. But anyway, if you want to follow Didier's analysis, he did put together sort of a step-by-step -step guide as to how he analyzed this particular document. And the XM mail server is the gift that keeps on giving for the bad guys. Yet another vulnerability in the XM mail server, yet another remote code execution issue. In this case, it's actually fairly trivial overall. It's a buffer overflow in the eHello command. Whenever a client connects to a mail server, it will send the eHello command, typically followed by its host name. In this case, if you send too many characters as a host name with the eHello command, well, you have a heap-based buffer overflow. Not 100% sure how well the remote code execution is exploitable, but certainly a trivial denial of service vulnerability. A patch has been released by the XM team and major Linux distributions have already released updated packages. So please update XM as soon as possible. In the past, we have seen these vulnerabilities exploited very quickly. And with last week's updates, Cisco announced that it will only release Cisco IOS and IOS XE software security advisories twice a year. This is a pretty substantial change given that it appears like we have almost seen updates for these operating systems more than once a month. Have to look back to see exactly how often Cisco published them, but they state that this is based on customer feedback and no doubt customers don't really like to patch their routing and network gear that frequently. So twice a year it is. And in addition to the fourth Wednesday of September, we will also see updates on the fourth Wednesday of March. Most other companies seem to sort of follow Microsoft's lead with monthly updates. Now Oracle does quarterly updates. I'm not really sure if any other sort of major software or hardware vendor does semi-annual updates. And Microsoft announced that in Windows Server 2019, it will become easier to disable legacy TLS versions, where legacy means everything less than TLS 1.2. To support this, a simple GUI option was added that basically just reads disable legacy TLS in the TLS configuration for your server, and that should take care of it. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.